Let's take a look. So let's take a look at the following example that deals with high energy particle accelerators. So calculate the amount of energy that must be gained by a single electron inside a high energy particle accelerator to accelerate that particle from rest to a final velocity that is given by 95% of the speed of light in a vacuum. So basically, because the speed of that electron is very close to the speed of light in a vacuum, we must use the relativistic kinetic energy equation. So we're going to use the work energy principle. So the amount of work that must be done on that electron to accelerate it inside the high energy particle by, let's say, the electric field is given by the change in relativistic the kinetic energy of that particle. So delta K is equal to K final minus K initial. Now recall that the relativistic kinetic energy K is given by gamma minus 1 multiplied by mc squared, where m is the mass of the electron, c is the speed of light in a vacuum, and gamma is the ratio 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared where V is the velocity of our particle. So basically, the initial relativistic kinetic energy is given by gamma initial minus 1 multiplied by mc squared. And the final relativistic kinetic energy is gamma final minus 1 multiplied by mc squared. So we have gamma final and gamma initial. So let's multiply these out and we get the following four terms. So notice that the mc squared terms will cancel and we're left with gamma final mc squared minus gamma initial mc squared. So we can bring out the mc squared term because it appears on both of these terms. We get gamma final minus gamma initial multiplied by mc squared. We can combine gamma final minus gamma initial and we get gamma or the change in gamma is equal multiplied by mc squared is equal to the amount of work that must be done on that particle. So to calculate the work we have to calculate the delta gamma. So let's begin by calculating gamma initial. Gamma initial is given by 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus. So the velocity is 0 because we begin from rest. So 0 squared divided by c squared, this term goes to 0. We have 1 divided by the square root of 1 or 1 divided by 1 and we get 1. So gamma initial is 1. What about gamma final? Well basically as the velocity increases, this term increases and so we see that gamma increases as well. So now we have 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus 0.95 squared c squared divided by c squared. The c squared terms cancel. We plug them into our calculator. So we have 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus 0.95 squared and we get about 3.203. So now to calculate our delta gamma, we take this, subtract 1, and we get 2.203. And now we can use this equation, so the work energy principle. The amount of work that needs to be done is given by the change in our kinetic energy. So this should have a delta. And this is equal to delta gamma multiplied by mc squared. So we plug in 2.203 for the delta gamma, plug in our mass of the electron, and plug in the speed of light in a vacuum, and we get an energy of about 1.806 times 10 to negative 13 joules, or equivalently, about 0.951 mega electron volts. So we see that this is how much energy must be gained by that electron, it's how much energy must be done by, let's say, an electric field to accelerate that electron from rest to a velocity of 95% of the velocity of light in a vacuum.